heart that's broken Make it over again But I know a man who can I can't take a soul that's in sick Wash it white, white as snow See if I can 
One night while upon life's raging sea Looked as if I would suffer defeat Darkness of night closed off the light My heart sank with fear I knew my destruction was a matter of time Jesus stepped in and said, this old boy's mine I'm safe from all harm For he walked through the storm Came looking for me He came looking for me He came looking for me He made a way when there was no way That I could see When I drifted far, Jesus was near Rescue my soul and calm my fears. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far, would anyone care that I should be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of Jesus stepped in and said, this one is mine. I'm safe from all harm. So he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He made a way when there was no way that I could see. When I drifted far, Jesus was near. Rescue my soul and calm my fears. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. Came looking for me.
have every failure, God, and you'll have every victory. Walking on the water, come along with me, for I want to see this man walking on the water. Well, he can raise the dead from the grave, change the water.
Right, yeah. Welcome everyone to Elk Bad Church. I ain't got distemper. I don't know what it is. When I went to the doctor, I wasn't coughing, but now I'm coughing. But I can't be kissing, I don't reckon. Well, give me two shots. Dry me up. Uh, Lamar, how about open some prayer? Got a couple of cards I need to read tonight before we get into what's going on with the calendar. Thank you. Make sure one more time. It says thank you so much for the beautiful flowers that you sent for our sweet daddy. They were still, they are still beautiful, and we sincerely appreciate them. He loved everyone at Hickok Baptist Church and truly enjoyed attending church with all of you. Please continue to remember our family and your prayers. Our hearts are absolutely broken. We love you all with, with sincere thanks and appreciation. With much love, the Charlie C.W. Riggin family. I had a look. Charlene didn't want to hear it read, I don't think. She, she's thankful, but... Anyhow, remember him in a prayer for the loss of him, and Blatch is not doing good either, but I can't remember her. Another thank you. It says, for all the kindness you have shown, we thank you very much for sympathy and sorrowing days. For well, friendship, healing touch, with gratitude, our hearts are full. The words cannot convey the tender thoughts and thankfulness we hold for you today by the family of Jim Mohandaspor. That was our cousin, Wanda Jean Johns, used to be his husband, passed away. So, got two thank you notes. I know Regan's family still need well. Both families still need prayer for their losses. We continue to remember them. <coughs> On our calendar, May the 13th, you ladies, uh, uh, you don't have a ladies' tea party, day before Mother's Day, Mother's Day tea party, 11 a.m. Of course, the cost, I guess, the sign up sheet. Time's over, or can people still sign up out there? I don't know. Anyhow, probably. I think it's just capped out. It's over 100. Over 100. Uh, anyhow, probably at this late date, I'd think everybody's coming to be there. But anyhow, it's going to be this Saturday. Y'all be there. Uh, and evidently they are. Over 100, Brother James said, coming. So, y'all enjoy it. The next day will be Mother's Day. Uh, and you can have pancakes and parfaits at 945. All mothers and children are welcome in the social hall. No evening service that day. Yeah, it says 945, so evidently you're going to miss Sunday school okay. if, you're, if you're a mother and you're going over there. That'll work out. Most of them will be over there with you. Uh, Lord work it out. March 21st, grad day, freshmen to follow. Uh, church conference that night. 29th, memorial office be closed. It's being closed some now due to Jackie's husband being in the hospital. Uh, June the 4th through the 8th, vacation bi Bible school. <coughs> Still, still needed a third and sixth grade teacher. We probably got a third, maybe. Maybe still need a sixth. Kick off that day before, June the 3rd, from 11 to 3 p.m. Water slide, food, and snow biz. 
And uh, June the 3rd that night would be a youth night of worship. And at, at 6 p.m., the guest speaker would be Mike Pitts, and the Bearded Moose Praise and Worship Band would be playing. to wear old clothes, they're going to be out in the garden. <clears throat> well, that's where they're going to have their, their class time. I hope it rains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope it rains before then. Yeah. Turn attention to our prayer lesson. Besides uh, the one we got in our bulletin. And some of these we've already mentioned at once, but uh, we still got them here. Byron Smith, as far as I know, has not been moved. And the last I heard, they might be going to even take him to Savannah instead of Brooks. Uh, they have work my comp and them working that out, I understand. Glenn Barn, uh, Bo and Lies of the Lord, Traveling Mercy, Danny Thornton Shingle, Harry Cruz, Sick, 180 Chester, sick. Marcy Gibson, Dallin, she uh, <clears throat> fell and broke her arm. They operated on her, I think, yesterday. But she's already had the surgery. Broke it in two places. Our mama, Lydia Burke, she's sick, needing some prayer. Sean Fussell's dad, his name was Wayne, right? They found out Wayne Fussell. Passed away. Dennis Truett, spot on liver. Lewis Truett, thyroid problems. That they just two brothers. Riley John traveling. Sue O'Berry had carpal tunnel surgery. See, did good. Did good. Okay. David had tests. Doctor hadn't told him, yeah, you got to go pay that doctor and let him tell him, you know, but people run it said they, they didn't see nothing wrong. So we, that's the way we pray, and that's the way that doctor going to see it, too. Jason Dean, bereavement. David Mitchell, we know him as Mitch, married to Teresa Prescott. He got throat cancer. He needed a prayer. Charles Thomas needed a prayer. Me and Ruby's had a time with her eyes, her eyes doing, so. but uh, she's going now June 12th for that eye surgery that I keep trying to think she's already having, but <laughs> anyhow, she's going to have it June the, uh, 12th, we'll be in prayer for that. <coughs> Man of Haven's in the hospital, Keith Brown, he's a, he's a pastor of Little Memorial, he's had Three strokes this year, Sister Diane said. Uh, he just had another. Need their prayer. Martha Thomas Joyner. <clears throat> she's had cancer in the past, and she's having to take chemo treatments again. She's come back. Remember her? Alan Walker's got lung disease. Remember him? <clears throat> Anybody else we need to add or take away? Yeah, thank you. They just told Allison I forgot. Keith Thomas got shingles.
You ain't got my lesson to that for. cards up on the, well, they'll be put in the bulletin, I guess. I'm full of electricity, I think. Let's stand and sing a couple songs. Some I found that I hadn't sung in a while. I know one of them for sure. probably sung this one more recently but
Hello, the mic. I'm going to sing an old song today. I looked in my, last week I said about my legs, and uh, it was a year ago, May the 26th of last year, I went fishing the Mud Lake with uh, Gene Price and Mike Hendricks. Well, I forgot when Dad took us fishing after we picked a biker, it was always dry. So I knew where the smokehouse was, but it was wind. And I sunk up in the mud. I caught a fish. Oh, well, I, a fish caught the line, and he broke my 20-pound test line, and I couldn't move. I was stuck in the mud. Well, by shifting around, I guess I must have uh, got a little deeper in the mud because I couldn't get out. It took me 30 minutes, and I prayed, Jesus, help me to get out of this place. I won't come back. And I finally fell backwards, and I pulled out. But it pulled my muscles in my leg, I guess, and I've been, I haven't been able to bounce back yet. I'm 78 years old. You just don't bounce back like you was when 26, you know. So take care of your health. But this song, I wrote this song, and uh, you listen to it, you'll get a blessing from it. I know how muddly God is name, I know how muddly. God is name, there's mud, mud, mud in every stream. I know how mud lake, God is name. My military friends and brothers in the church took me fishing in their pickup truck. We went through puddles that you can't go, but the four-wheel drive made it so. We got to the lake right on time. I got my tackle and a fix by line. I hung a fish and knew he was big. He broke my line and tore up my rig. I couldn't move. The mud was tight. I prayed to God with all my might. I felt his love like never before. It was God's grace. He had opened the door. With all my might, I crawled out. I learned that day how to shout. Life is lot. Life is a lot like Mud Lake. Stay alert for goodness sake. I know how Mud Lake got its name. I know how Mud Lake got its name. There's mud, mud, mud in every stream. I know how Mud Lake got his name. I went by and sung that to C.W. Uh, Riggins when he was in the nursing home rehab. He turned around and sung that song he had written for the pastor to me. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Jake. Have your Bibles again to go with me to the book of Malachi. I want to start at the end of chapter 3, but mostly cover chapter 4 tonight. But to kind of get us our wheels rolling to jog our memories from where we left off. What I've come to notice in the book of Malachi, which is mo mostly known when you say Malachi, is about tithing and and. And, and, it, and it is, it, it is there in just a verse or two. But Malachi has, uh, like in Revelation, John had a, a detailed description of what heaven's like. And the book of Malachi, it's got, I would say, more adjectives or more description, if you would, about what it will be like when Jesus comes and finish the earth off to, to, to burn it off and make it again. It's mentioned more here than you can gather in a lot of other uh, verses. You know, we know in Revelations it tells us where the worm dieth not and it's eternal and uh, what will be there to be a weeping and wailing and gnashing the teeth. But this is a description of the strength of, uh, of that demolition, I guess you could say, that fiery moment. But 
If you found Malachi 3, verse 17 and 18, and we'll share those with you. If you'll stand as we honor the reading of God's word, then we'll get to chapter 4. It says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Let's pray. Father, tonight again we, we come to you, God, asking you to bless the reading of your word. God, open our hearts and minds as we stand for a few moments. God, and, and, and find the gold nuggets in your word, Lord, that gives us more insight, not only about today, but what the future is going to be like. God, I, I, I thank you, Lord, for loving us. I thank you, God, for hearing and answering prayer. Go with us, Father, now as we, we dig in. Uh, Lord, and we speak on your behalf. Lord, bless us as only you can. And all God's people said, amen. As, as you look there, uh, I, I always like reading the parts in there when it refers, when Jesus is, is referring to his people, that they're mine. Yeah, it shows a possession, which he is. Uh, we are his possession. We are his prized possession, uh, so to speak. And uh, he says, and uh I will come back and gather them up as they were my jewels and put them all together. And he says, and then we'll return. And then when we return from there, he says, we'll discern between the righteous and the ones that are not righteous. And so it, it kind of gets to that point there in verse um, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, where it talks about the, the coming of Christ. And it says in verse 1, he says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Uh, I, you don't really find that description anywhere else as it speaks right there. Um, uh, but what brings my attention, Do you, you, how many of you ladies have a self-cleaning oven? Boy, there's a bunch of lazy women in this room. I didn't say that now. Self-cleaning oven. But you, you know what's unique about a self-cleaning oven? That stuff that you couldn't scrub off. It gets so hot in there that it'll go to like almost ashes and you just wipe it right away. That's the picture I get in my mind as Malachi is describing what he's been told. He says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Are all you ladies ovens, when you lock that thing in and, and you tell it to self-clean, you know you can't open the door, right? to a certain amount of time. And, and the reason that is because it probably don't never get that hot except during that particular time. And it's got a time that it takes to get that hot to do the damage to whatever impure objects is on the walls or on the racks inside of that oven. Well, this is an intense heat. It describes this as an oven. In those days... The ovens, the, the way they cooked, it was, it was clay-like ovens, uh, similar to the ones, as it mentioned er, earlier in, in chapter 3, uh, uh, using the term the re, refiner's uh, fire uh, in an oven like that. And if you've ever been to, um, Miss Allison, where's the place up there that they make the knives and all, and you watch them make the knives at Pigeon Forge? I can't remember. So, Somewhere by the red barn or anyway, but they make these knives and, and you think about it and they'll put this old uh, railroad spike in there and get it hot and bring it out and beat it, bring it out and beat it. Every time you see them beat it, stuff flakes off of it and it's glowing red. I mean, it could actually go into a liquid form, but just before it does, they bring it out. I mean, to the hottest that that metal can take it without going into metal form, uh, then he begins to beat on it, even though it's that hot. You, you can, now, I want you to get your, your minds thinking what that day would be like when the Lord comes back and when, when he sets the fields on fire, how hot that will be. And, and it's like the ovens that we have today uh, that will lock in place, and that heat will get more hot than any time it ever has in its life. And it speaks of what's going to be the remainder. So I, I said all that. I uh, figured you ladies would get into that self-cleaning oven thing. How many, how many can remember before self-cleaning cleaning ovens? 
huh? Okay, how much Comet did you use in those days? Uh, I remember Mama used Comet and everything else, scratching that thing in there with a Brillo pad and all like that. So uh, you got deep dishes so you wouldn't cook over in there because it was too hard to clean, right? All right, but anyway, enough with the oven. And it says, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Now, understand in his description, he's, he, what, when, it, when you think of something proud that's standing tall, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's really out there, and he says, and the, and the wicked, they shall do nothing but stubble. You're talking about uh, when, when, when they talked about the wheat and cutting it down, and then after they separate the tares, they'd be cast into the fire, and it's called hay and stubble. Remember that word, hay and stubble, which used to be standing tall and proud. Now, only things left is stubble at that particular point. Not only that, it says, and it shall be stubble, and the day that comes shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. You, you, you know, um, in, in the years past, and we, we got away from it in years past, it was common in, in, the, in the winter part of the year when things, a lot of things went dormant that all people who had land and cows in the woods and different things, you would burn in, in those days. And you didn't want such a hot burn that it would, it would burn too much up that it would actually kill the existing things. Uh, and they never come back. Uh, but burning was good. You'd, you'd keep all the things you didn't care uh, to have. You'd keep that beat down. And, uh, but notice again what fire would do. It takes the high and tall and the proud, and it brings them down to stubble again. And it's going it, 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 he gets a little more serious about it in just a little bit later on. It says, but it says it'll burn. You know when the swamp burns, and it's real dry and the swamp burns. The reason why they can't put it out because there's, there, there's peat that builds up over the years without water. And then when the water leaves, you got that sponge uh, peat moss in there. And uh, there's really no earth holding that stuff together but way down. And when that fire burns in there, then that's when all the trees fall. And uh, there is no root for it. to, And, and so it's nothing. And I think that's God's way of uh, cleaning out uh, the swamp again uh, as, he, as he's done over the years to maintain it uh, where it would hold water and the trees wouldn't take it over. Uh, you know, that's just my thinking. I mean, I got a pea brain that I'm, I know God works in mysterious ways, but that place is only made to hold the world together, and that's about it, and raise alligators. Uh, but when they have a fire like that, it cannot be touched. It burns up under the ground, and nothing can stop it unless God does something to stop it, which is a tremendous rainfall. Yeah, and, 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 and draw these pictures. This is, this is the pictures that I draw when I read the scriptures to try to get me to understand it. When he talks about a fire, it's an unquenchable. We heard that word, that description in Revelation. It talks about an unquenchable fire. And that swamp burning is almost a picture of that. When firemen can't do anything about it, they can drive the the big planes over and dump the fire retardant and all that, but if it's burning underground and it never gets to the flames, it can, an unquenchable fire. Uh, not only unquenchable, but hotter than anything could imagine. Doing damage, so much damage that there won't be no branches, no root left. And what it means is there's no chance for life after that point. No chance for life whatsoever. I remember my granddad, we used to have... Uh, those that ever had a, a little tobacco farm, we used to have our own tobacco beds, and we would uh, we would make our tobacco beds like in February, and, and you know, and, and we would gas them and all. But Grandpa said before you got that methyl bromide that you would gas the beds with to kill all the seeds and and sterilize everything in there. Well, what they done back then, they would bring all kind of debris and stuff where they was going to have the bed, and uh, they would pile it up, and then one day they'd have a big fire, 
and they, and they would burn it off, and that heat would get so hot in that bed of coal that it would help kill the weed seed down in the bottom, and it would, you know, that, that's what, you know, I always think of popcorn, you know, that's what you do, how you make popcorn, right? You, you take, a, you, you take a, a corn nugget that's dried and put it on something hot, and it'll get so hot, it just, and if you leave it there long enough, it'll just burn, slam up to nothing. The picture we see with him, with the unquenchable fire, it's going to burn so hot that there won't be any chance for life other than once something new comes back in. And that's a picture of when New Jerusalem comes down from heaven and comes back down to planet Earth where we're going to live forever and ever. Uh, when it comes back down here, it says it's all going to be brand new. There's nothing here uh, that will regenerate until God wants whatever he puts back in its place. I think it will be similar to the Garden of Eden. That's just my thoughts. Uh, whatever it is, I'm going to be happy about it. So uh, uh, I, he don't need my advice. I'm just saying if he's going to burn it that hot and that clean, you know, and the wicked is not so because, see, they won't be here. Uh, they're gonna be, can, they'll be in a place of continual fire, in a place where the worm dies not, and it's an unquenchable fire, and it's going to be under the ground, so to speak. It's going to be in the heart of the earth, a place that we called hell. And so, uh, you know, I, I, so you got a crazy imagination. Well, I, well, this is how I understand these scriptures. If you just read through it, you might, you, you might miss his description, but it really intrigued me how much definition he is putting to the damage of the fire that's going to happen in that day. And all he's trying to say is, listen, after that point, life is over for everything except those that are going on to be with the Lord and those that go into a, a place called hell. But listen to this. In verse 2 it says, But unto you that fear my name. That, here we, this is the good part. This is, the good, this is the part we're going to be in, the ones that love the Lord and uh, are saved. It says, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness. Now, you, you've heard him called a lot of things, but he is the son of righteousness here. As he, you know, he is the son of God. Uh, he's Jesus as we know him. And here, uh, Mal Malachi refers to him in these scriptures as the son of righteousness. Who is going to go to heaven? Nothing but the righteous, okay? Uh, we were none righteous according to the scripture. No, not one. But we are righteous by this precious blood of Jesus. Here is the son of righteous in that day. But unto you that fear the Lord shall the son of righteous arise. You know, that's the picture, that moment when you hear that word arise means God's son is in action. He is fixing to move. That don't mean he sits down all the time. I, I'm not saying that. But when he arises to the occasion, when he makes a move like he did in the days of Noah, uh, like he's did many times uh, with the prophets, he arose and done things. Y'all remember when it hadn't rained so long and then they, he sent there a, 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 a little old cloud about the size of a man's hand and it just flooded the area. Um, he arose and done those things. So he's going to arise. He said the, 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 the son of righteous arise with healing in his wings. When he takes action, that permanent healing will be when all things that are connected to, to sin, uh, do you believe that COVID was a form of sin? I, 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 you know, COVID itself, but the results of sin cause COVID. I would say that. Uh, you say, well, what do we all do? What do we, uh, you know, uh, listen, God's got a way. What, look, let's look back in, in, the, in Egypt about the time Moses went there. Everybody there didn't deserve the frogs and all that stuff right there. But because of sin, because he wouldn't let God's people go, he inflicts stuff on mankind to get them whittled down to where they get humbled, even though Pharaoh only humbled long enough for them to get to the Red Sea before he had a change of heart. You know, and if Pharaoh was in the mix of all that that died in the Red Sea right there, then he died a lost man. There's no way uh, a man that has that kind of heart will ever make it into the kingdom of God. So you, you see here those that uh, it says that when the Son of Man arises... He comes forth with healing in his wings. You know, it's not that he's got um, uh, 
angel wings or anything like that. But his movement is uh, always spoken of in some way of flight. If you, you'll know, he, you know, he'll step out on the clouds. He'll be coming out of the sky. So some form of flight. But when he comes, there'll be healing. This burning off, this, this total destruction of earth as we know it, uh, is a healing process. That healing represents the power of God. And when God heals something, had you, do you ever re- recall in the Word of God where He healed anybody in the Word of God and then found them later in the same condition before God ever done that? Can't find it. It's not there. The blind man received his sight. He died a man with his sight. The crippled man, he died a, a, a man that could, that could walk. The deaf died a hearing man. And uh, I, I'll tell you, the only thing we know is that when he rose one from the dead, they did eventually die because it's once appointed a man wants to die. And, you know, that's evident. We're going to have that to happen. But we see here that once he does it, it is a permanent move, and that's when uh, the final days of men. He says, and ye shall go forth and grow up as cattle calves of that of the stall you think about that i think about calves in the stall uh we're gonna be living on um high on the hog let's say we're gonna be like the fatty what do we do all my cows they stay out there but when i get ready to get one in condition to butcher i pay a lot of special favors to that calf I provide all the water he can drink and I provide all the, the food he can eat and the right kind of food that are just satisfying that that he wants to eat. There's nothing you're going to put in there. Well, you either eat that old boy or start that. No, no, no. You put what he wants in there and that's a picture of the calf in the stall as God's coming back and he's going to treat us. We're going to be stall fed, praise the Lord, from the master's table, the manna which come down from heaven and it's just going to be, ooh, glory. Glory. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I, I, I tell you. Anyway, I could get really excited about those things. And in verse 3 it says, And ye shall tread down the wicked. All those things that are under him. How are we going to do that? It's going to tell you. He says, uh, For they shall be as ashes under the souls of uh, under the souls in that day, I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Now here's the picture. All that that was here, nothing will be recognizable when we come back as though it was. Everything under, under there that could be will be ashes. It'll be ashes. You know, uh, you, you know, you hear that sometimes. Not very. I heard it one time in my life at a funeral. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust and all like that. You know, we pretty much uh, go on to return to dust. We were made from the dust of the earth according to the word of God. So you return to that. Uh, ashes and dust are, are kind of coincide. Um, dust is the finest particles of, of soil that we know. And ashes is the remains of what a fire's done and it's totally just almost microscopic here it is microscopic what's left of it all that will be spread abroad and it'll be under our feet in other words it won't it won't it won't bother you no more i I can remember you you used to could burn off part of a field that had sand spurs in it but we didn't burn it hot enough to get rid of them sand don't go barefooted out there because you'd still get a sand spur. But when God gets through it, there won't be no sand spurs left. The fire will burn up. Everything there that's a problem, everything that's a hindrance, everything that is, uh, will inflict pain or destruction or anything in your life, it'll all be gone. And we'll be there. He says, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as asses under the soles of your feet in that day, in the day. And that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, verse 4. He says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servants. Now, he's going he's gonna to phase back a couple of times right here. He says, you remember the law of Moses. And not, when he says remember them, he's saying adhere to them. Adhere to them. Do those things. We're not out of the Ten Commandments. They still work today. You know, you could obey all the commandments and you say, well, if you do that and not get saved or confess your sins, well, I believe you have no other God before you but God. I believe you have confessed your sins. I believe you're living right. Now, although the Ten Commandments can't save you, the Bible says that we must do that. But if you don't have no other God before you, I think you'll follow that in suit. He said, remember you the law of Moses, my servant. So keep that in check. He says, which I've commanded unto him in Horeb uh, for all Israel. 
with the statutes and the judgment. So all that still in place. The old school, the old school is uh, uh, the Old Testament to what we have versus when Jesus coming down on the cross and made a different way. What it was, the law was weak that it couldn't do. Jesus' blood, you know, they cover the blood. Jesus washes the sins away. He, he forgives them and they're gone. He said, remember that. He says, and behold, I'll send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He's going to send the prophet Elijah. He's going to send that day. You know, uh, in terms of we believe, I believe, in what hits here is in that um, thousand years, there's going to be two prophets there. And I, I believe one of them could be him. Uh, I, you may, I may be wrong, not 100%, but I, I do believe that one of them will be him. He says, I'll send him. Before that day, you know, that's what he says. Before that day, I'll send my prophet Elijah. You know, see, Elijah's well because if you remember on Mount Transfiguration there, he was seen by Peter, James, and John. So uh, he's still much alive. Uh, you know, how close is some of these guys? Well, some thinks because Abraham was the father of all, that, you know, that God looked at him, that he was a great man. He was a great man. Well, what about Elisha? What about Elijah? Well, what about Ezekiel? What about this one or that one? Enoch. And, you know, what, what about these guys? Listen, you know, the Bible says that God's no respect of persons. It's just this is the ones that was ordained to do what they're going to do. And they'll be there in that day. And he's going to have a chance to, to preach the word. And he's going to do it uh, with full of blood. Well, wouldn't you like to go to a revival there when the, uh, the, the visiting uh, pastor is going to be standing up there would be Elijah the prophet. Wow, wouldn't that be great? He says, that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, that word dreadful there don't mean we're going to dread that day. It, that, that ain't what that means. It ain't a dreadful. The dreadful day of the Lord is a happy time. It, what it means is it's a final day. It's the day we're looking forward to. It's going to be dreadful for some, but it's a glorious day for the, king, king, uh, the king's children. In verse 6, he says, And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Now listen. And the hearts of the children's to the father, lest I come. And smite the earth with a curse. You know the Bible even speaks of that in the latter days. What, what, what some signs that we'll see that sons will turn against their fathers, and fathers will turn against their sons, and so forth and so on. As we rehearse the, the scriptures, he says, and this will happen. He says, unless that's less. That's what the word means. He says, I come and smite the earth with a curse. What is the curse? Well, it's the fire. It's the fire of the Lord when he comes. And, you know, the, the, the thousand years of tribulation uh, that, that's spoken of, uh, hardly no one will get saved in that time. I, I can't say no one would, but you'll give your life if you do. You'll, you'll give your life. You know, all, all we know for sure is they, there's not going to be but a handful left down here to do the work of God. And two major players uh, from the Old Testament will be there. Then after that, the judgment, and of course now, listen, we won't be participating in that. I, I get to hear some preachers sometimes, and they'll talk about that, that we're living in the tribulation period. No, we're not. We're living in tribul, tribul, tri, tri, terrible times. We're living in terrible times. I, I agree with that. But this is not the tribulation. Well, you don't want to be here during the tribulation. One thing is uh, the chances is minute that you'll ever get saved. And the, the, the things that you have to put up with. But I will say this. Where the turn of the world and the way it's acting now is a tune-up for the tribulation period. The tune-up. Let me explain this. And I think maybe at this point technology is going to play a big part in the tribulation period. Oh, it's great and it's got a lot of stuff and you can do, you know... <laughs> That little thing you hold in your hand, you can go anywhere in the world in a matter of a few buttons to mash. But one day, but one day, to communicate with everyone in the world at one time, it seemed like technology would be, now that ain't impossible with God. He can speak from heaven and we'll all hear him. Because all the saints of God is going to hear the trumpet sound. And, you know, I don't believe if it's nighttime here or if the other side of us is on the bottom side of the earth and it's nighttime, we all going to hear it. He's, God's big. 
He's big. You know, even around here, if an airplane breaks the sound barrier, we think it sounds all over the world. It, it, it would be pretty sure. And it does vibrate your windows, and it makes the china in the china cabinet rattle, and it does all those things. But it, it's not but just a few miles around that that's heard. When God speaks, it's going to thunder so loud that it'll even wake the dead according to the word of God. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a tremendous time. But he says, when he comes to strike the earth with a curse, and that's when he's going to burn everything off. But oh, happy day. Because it won't be long after that. That new Jerusalem is going to come down, and we're going to be in it with him. And the Bible says we're going to come and live with him, and there forevermore, and there will we be with the Lord. What a wonderful time. It's not a dreadful day uh, to us. I'm not dreading that day. Those that are lost, that's the ones that's going to dread that day. It's not, a, not That word dreadful don't mean all bad. If we know the Lord, it's going to be a wonderful day, a wonderful day. And who's going to do it? And I'll end it with this. When the sun of righteousness shall arise. Now, don't you know it? Sometimes, in my imagination, I just think about what it's like when I was a kid, if Daddy ever got up, it got quiet. I believe in heaven when Jesus stands up from the throne by his Father. I believe every angel's at an attention. I believe those spirits of people that's up there, There's a you could hear a pin drop in there because they reverence his his wonderful love and his power and the mercy that he's had on mankind, that they were uh, privileged to be a part of that up there. It's not one that they're fearful of. It's respect and love for what he's done. Amen. Has someone ever done something so much so good to you that you're just going to love them to the day they die? Probably your spouse. Probably mom and dad and probably a close friend, has done something for you that you'll take with you the rest of your life. Well, Jesus Christ is going to take with you much further than that because when you start life anew, when you get born again, he's going to take it through eternity. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Think about that. What a friend. He just wants to be your friend. And he'll stick closer than any family member, any neighbor that you ever had. And the Bible tells us also that he's always there. He's ever present. And I thank him for that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you. God, these hidden things in the word can just excite us when we we kind of got an idea what they mean. God, I know I... I probably didn't even scratch it, but Lord, it, it, what I did scratch off was good to me. I'm excited. I can't wait till that day comes when, we, and when all God's people can be together and we can be one heavenly chorus singing praises and worshiping our Savior. What a day that will be. God, I thank you, Lord, that we can enjoy the presence of the Spirit of God just by reading and studying your word and then proclaiming your word Lord, that it, 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 it just builds our hope even better every time. God, go with us now as we leave this place and get us home safely. And Lord, if it be thy will somewhere along the way, tomorrow or the rest of this week, someone that we're in need in front of us, Lord, that we can share the gospel, or God, we could be a help. Lord, let it be and let you be glorified. We thank you now, Father. Go with us now as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen.